Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Rabbas. My position is on the internal security part. Can I confirm your full name and date of birth? Hannah Smith, I'm 22 years old. Pleasure to meet you, Hannah. Hannah, I've been asked to conduct an abdominal examination on you. There are various components to this test. But generally speaking, it's going to be very much around um, the feeling around your stomach as well as the CO2 that's around in there. Is that okay with you? As part of the examination, I will need you to remove your upper garment, for which we will look into a shot for all of you. Is that okay? Lovely. Um, and are you in any pain or discomfort? No. Uh, any shows of pregnancy? No. When was the last time you looked at your bowel? This morning. When was the last time you looked for a urination? This morning. Lovely. Um, would you mind removing your upper garment and making yourself comfortable? Thank you. If you want me to stop any time, don't have anything to say, and we can take it from there. Is that okay? Are you warm enough? Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Lovely. Ignore me now, and I'm going to speak now for the sake of the camera and the exam. Gastro intestinal abdomination. What's your standard? So I'm now going to conduct the end of the examination. Looking for any clinical paraphernalia, any, any, any IV lines, any vomit bowl. The medication on the side, the salazine, so phalazine, so IVD. Going to look on the patient themselves, and we've got stoma bag, any urinary catheters, any NG tubes. Okay. And then just bring out your arms and cock your back on, please. And all right, and just relax your hands as they are, and bring your hands together like so. Uh, wonderful. Any pain or discomfort in your hands? Lovely. So looking for the actual nails, any cardi initia, do you need here? Can we press down and hold? No pain or tenderness at all. Two, cent uh, two um, second cap refill, looking on the palms themselves. There's no excessive perfusion from erythema or Jupiter's contraction. The temperature is normal and they are well perfused and united. So I'll take your hand. Straight ahead for me, please. That's good. Looking on the face, looking on the eyes, for that's the lavender, looking at the right of the eye for an uterus around the, around the mouth, any chelosis or angular stomatitis. Uh, and if I might ask you to bring your hands down and look up to the ceiling and relax, you'll be like, ah, oh, push out your hand oh. for me. That's wonderful, thank you. So, good oral hygiene, there's no plasitis of the tongue, or piece shaped tongue, the gingiva and the buccal membranes, otherwise, the pocket would bring them to the are not valid. Lovely. Moving on, and look on the chest, we're in spite of the right lens aptasia, and then around the stomach itself, any signs of distension, ascites, any type of medusa, any colour signs, or any retainer signs, as well as any purple astray or foxical signs. And I'm going to now just ask you to lift these up, by the way, and then look for any scratch marks or any IVD wounds or track marks on the antipodal fossil. Would you check, check your uh, fossil for me? Wonderful. So we have a sign and we have a um, pulse rate of 56 beats per minute, per minute in normal sinus rhythm, good volume and normal character. And if I might ask you now just to rest your head back and look over that side, looking for the GVP, it's again about two to four centimeters above the angle of the Louis and between these two heads of the stomach, as it must have. And any abdominal pain and discomfort? Let me to push down if I might. Can you just relax for me? And relax as you are. Look at that one again, please. Wonderful. And relax. That should be the hepatitis of the reflux, and I can see the elevation, the rising of the JVP. And if you'll sit up for me, please, swing the legs over that way. I'm now going to have a feel of the lymph nodes that lands around your head and neck. Is that okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Let me start with the submental, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular. Suboccipital, posture cervical, anterior cervical, and then supraclavicular, particularly noting any rays on the left supraclavicular fossa, indicative that's known as the Virchow node, known as trosius sign of presence, and this is indicative of gastric carcinoma amongst others. And I'm now going to flatten the couch, and I'm going to ask you to lay down nice and flat on your back.
rigidity or guarding as well as any palpable masses on the deeper one same regions some activity of the stomach there clearly okay. no palpable masses again I've already been okay there wonderful I'm now going to ask you to take a few deep breaths in and out for me please and I'm going to so now assess the important factor measuring and again start in the right iliac fossa and ascend supinally. Remember to push in when the patient breathes out and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in. And when the patient inspires, start to have more fluid margin against the, uh, the actual cannabis. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to do a cross very firmly. So then you go from the right to the fossa across to the left upper quadrant again in synchrony with the patient's breathing again looking for spinal medley remember spinal medley will be three times as high as the spleen before you feel it generally speaking and now we're going to tap on your chest on your abdomen firmly okay and now going across Liver is in the normal place, bridge 5 to 9 on the right hand side, no sign of fatomegaly, and the spleen is in the medically long line from the left between the ribs and the head. I'm just going to push down on the temple, push down on the epitaxial region of the neoconcitations into the function of the leg, and I'm going to tap down the front. No, no superpubic tenderness, so otherwise, no bladder distension. I'm going to feel three kidneys, palatine the kidneys, biomanual renal enlargement as might be found in PCKD. I'm now going to listen to the bowel sound if I may. Wonderful. Normal bowel sounds, no bothering and uh, I also assess for any bruise, one centimeter either side of the umbilicus or any renal bruise, and then one centimeter up and one centimeter laterally to the left for the splenic artery and to the right for the hepatic artery, and there was no, no bruise there. And at least I'm not going to have a, a look around your ankles if that's okay. You'll not notice any swelling of your ankles, have you? And again, there's no swelling of the ankles, no signs of pedal edema or trophic changes, and as I push and press, no signs of putting edema. And that's Marcy and the regeneration, Alex. Thank you very much. We're now dead rest here to you for a moment. Um, I'm now going to present my findings. This was an otherwise unremarkable abdominal examination on um, Hannah, who is a 22-year-old young lady. Uh, further, the, there was no guarding or rigidity of the abdomen. I don't know whether any possible masses. Uh, further examination, I would conduct a blood test, full blood count, uh, as well as CRP and any specific tests, for example, TTG or IgA, a fecal calcopectin if it was warranted, and um, if it was absolutely necessary, then you can consider the likes of ultrasound, CTs, and, um, sorry, um, and um, an OGD. Now, to complete the examination here at hand, uh, before I let the patient go, what I would also conduct is an examination of the hernias, uh, any hernias that might be 
examination against them and the interior as well as the permanent examination. Kenneth, thank you very much.